Would it disturb you to know, Katie, that I used to have this as my screensaver many moons ago on my on my laptop in another school? That's some dedication. I just go for a sunset. It's just cliche with me. <laughs> so, what's the painting called again? Sorry. It is the fall of Icarus. When was it painted, sir? Oh, a long time ago. Uh, I'm thinking, I, I, I need to just go and double check that. I think. I think it was 1500s. Yeah. Yeah, Bruegel. Hang on. Ah, it was start. He started it in fifteen fifty, um, and then it looks like he, he completed it within the next sort of like he kind of went touched it up and all that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, so within the year, so fifteen fifty to fifteen fifty one. So, um, Abby, what sort of narrative do you see going on here? What, what's this, what, 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 what story do you have from this painting? Um, well, initially for me at least, the farmer's shirt is the most captivating element. And considering Icarus is supposed to be the subject, mm -hmm. um, it's not very typical. Um, well, that's not what you would expect, but I see a town of people who are more concerned about life just carrying on and valuing what they have than faffing over a man who was destined to fall and destined to die and who had a death who, which was preventable. Um, and it's more important for them to provide for the future generations rather than test human boundaries that were never really going to be broken, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. For, oh, like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of you say sort of daily life going on here. Um, yeah, like that, and, and, and it seems to be as you say again, thinking about that from the, from the title, you'd expect it. Yeah, Icarus to be more dominant that subject of the painting. Yeah, good. Um, Gabe, what about you? I literally said the same thing. I was just thinking that the town seems so focused on living their own lives that they fail to. Um, they failed to see Icarus's legs just like sticking out the water. I don't yeah. know the boat. Yeah. And he obviously the story is that he um flew too high and like Abby said, he was trying to break boundaries which are more likely not ever to be broken. But yeah, I literally said yeah. the exact same thing. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. Katie. See my comment 
is why yeah. is he naked? Why did he do this whole shebang naked? I mean, I don't know the story, but that they, they are naked legs. No, he's in a robe. <laughs> but Katie, why do you presume the rest of him was naked? Well, I can't see any shorts, so he doesn't really have much else to cover. Well, to be honest, all you've got is two little legs. His I'm torso upwards is, is, in, is in the water. Um, and again, if you think about it from that sort of classical time, you would have that, those sort of um, almost like um, Roman sort of toga tunic kind of thing, thing on. And, um, and it, obviously he had, he had his wax and wings, which are somewhat under submerged under water now sort of thing and the bits that didn't break up on the way down sort of thing um but yeah i don't i don't think he's totally <laughs> he'd get burnt to a crisp at that height mm-hmm. anything else about apart from his nakedness grab your attention katie well i think during edwards this is a bit of context but you know during oh. edwards reign, there was like You're frozen. Oh no. Come back to us, Katie. We want to know what happened in Edward's reign. Oh, you're back. Oh. Yeah, we got to Edward's reign. So obviously, there's like a lot of poverty during Edward's reign with like the lack of work and things like that. And it's like there's a real clear emphasis on that and the fact that the farmers and things like that don't even have the time to look up. At the falling, drowning man. To uh, excuse me. See He's the looking fact up. that. Well, you know, like in the wrong looking... direction. <laughs> yes, but they're also focused on their work and the ships and the development there. You know, I said there was a link with like gods and the sailing and things like that. Mm. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, and again, the whole thing isn't. It's good. I'm glad you all picked up on his little legs. Quite often, people don't pick up on his little legs. Um, in the water because it is, it's almost like he, yeah he doesn't get noticed and as you see everybody's just about their daily life um, and, and just getting on um, you you know all these little characters you know you get to get the chap here even close to water doesn't seem to be paying too much attention to the man that's fallen in the water um, you got a ship there quite close nobody seems to be thinking Ooh, better go and help that chap who's just fallen from the sky um, yeah, and we've got our, our shepherd here kind of just looking up wistfully in, in, into the skies in general direction. Um, and again, obviously, our farmer um, focused very much on his ploughing. But again, you know, a real sort of, um, and again, you think about it, there's a guy in the rigging there. He'd have a great um, view of what's just taken place here. Um, but it is that idea. And as mentioning, um, just to sort of really push Katie over the edge, um, there's a couple of famous poems. Um, which I'll let you read at your leisure. I'm not going to compel you to do it now, don't worry. Um, which to take their inspiration from this painting. Now, as a bit of fun, I'm going to have to go into the main screen so I can see Katie's reaction to this. As a bit of fun, I was thinking, he has two poems that have been inspired by a painting. And I thought, just for a bit of creativity, so we don't don't do the the you you know not just the se driven and all that sort of thing. I want you to locate a painting to inspire you to a piece, and I'll, I'll open up here. I'm just to be nice, Katie. Just to be nice. <laughs> Could those eyebrows get any higher? <laughs> just to be nice. I'm going to say you can do a creative response in any genre you wish. So to... I'm gonna. Just be ready for my haiku. Oh, oh, it's going to, oh, it's going to, oh. Now, you know, you know, if you're going to do a haiku, you've got to do it properly. Oh, How what, many syllables? What do you do in primary school where you spell the word down the side oh, and then you write a line? That's, yeah, that's an acrostic. I'm going to do an acrostic. Yeah, 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 because your, your haiku, it can only be three lines long and it's and it's got to be 17 syllables and it's got to be very philosophical and zen-like. I can't count syllables. Katie, how many syllables are in your name? K T. Two. I know that one. There you go. How how many syllables in Abby's name? A B. Yeah, but it's because you do the Abby. Like if if I didn't, I'd probably put three in Abby's if I hadn't thought about it. Three. Where'd you get a third one? A B B E. 
<laughs> but that, that that would that that wouldn't be a syllable. It's only when there is a vowel in the word. Correct, Gabe. That that's yeah. the other easy way of detecting um, <laughs> syllables. It's it's your vowels. The only problem you get is when two come side by side and you get a diphthong. Uh, <laughs> a diphthong. <laughs> yes. Have you never heard of a diphthong, Katie? Oddly enough, I haven't heard of a diphthong before. No, and I, this is nothing off of Love Island, Katie. Let me just say that in advance. <laughs> yeah, it's a thing. It's when you get you get the two vowels together because they'll blend together. And it, so sounds they like, it sounds like it could be a name of a lingerie line. I just want to put that out there. Yeah, well, we, we all thought that was the sort of thing that was going through your head. And do be aware, this is being recorded, Katie. Bob. <laughs> just send that to your mom and say, really? My mum's just accepted this now. She's just over it. <laughs> Lockdown fever's kicked in. <laughs> oh dear. But yeah, so I mean, it can. Yeah, but yeah, it'd be good to do a poem. But yeah, and if you if you Google it as well, you'll find as many a, a painting has inspired a poem. Um, but you, you just find one that you really like, um, and, and respond to it. You know, pick something out of it and, and be creative in your response to it. Um, <laughs> modern art like photos and things like oh, that oh gosh yeah i mean it can be it doesn't have to be one of the classics yeah i mean it's what floats your boat sort of thing you could do one in sailing couldn't you oh be ready <laughs> now that was oh, what, what, what's the name of your um what's the name of your dad's yacht maybe oh oh no, maybe oh no there, there's a great title for a poem maybe the, there's the irony in the fact that the boat before maybe was called why not <laughs> oh lord but I'll put it all into the one note and I'll, and I'll give you a sort of specific deadline, which I know that everybody then will just disregard and then just send in a, in a flurry at their own sort of speed sort of thing. But yeah, I thought that'd be something good to do as well to, you know, enrich and enhance. And it allows Abby to write some more poetry again. How is the poetry at the moment? Um, on and off. I have two or three that have kind of been on the go for a long time, but I just, I'm still lacking the... I don't creative know, but, news. I think so, but it's it's been a long time. I'm getting slightly concerned. Yeah, well, but, see, the, the painting could be the thing to trigger it all off again. It could. I have missed receiving your poetic outpourings. Oh, well, thank you. I have, I've put, well, there's one more up on there that I, I don't Isn't know. There? Right, I shall have a, I shall have a nose. It's a very, very short one, but still. Is it as short as a haiku? It's not too far off. It's only let's let's have a count. It is seven lines, but even short. So seven very short lines. There we go. Yeah. Now, if you want, you can go on to epic poetry if you wish, Katie. <laughs> Don't feel constrained. If you want to write a thousand lines, that's fine by me. Bring it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it already. I'm going to write the longest poem and then no one will read it. And because it's so long, everyone will just think I'm a genius. That's a plan. OK, we can go with that. Yeah. Are you up for this too, Gabe? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm just trying I mean, to again, it can be thing. any form. It can be so modern paintings or it could be, yeah, kind of, you know, a photo. Because photography comes into the art world now as well. So it could be a, a photographic image, you know. It could be a sculpture. Thing. Yeah, that's got, yeah, that is it. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is going to be good. I, I can feel it in my waters already. This I'm excited. Good. This good. is just completely. Oh. Hang on. Good post. Kill on YouTube. Yeah, I've had to change location today because uh, my son, he's uh, doing PhD things with his professor this morning, so he's got the office. I felt it only fair to give him the office back. Oh. So I, I've stopped down in the kitchen down there. So yeah, you may hear the barking of the dogs quite a bit. <laughs> I've got a completely separate question to the art. Thing. Yes, it's almost a concern because I've got a new pucker pad, right? Because my one completely ran out, and I'm trying to put in, you know, those little like folder divider things which you can write a little tab thing inside of the book. Yeah, yeah. I've tried. Does anybody know how to keep them in the little tab thing? <laughs> They keep falling out, and I don't know which one's which. <laughs> oh, no. I've never come across that issue before. <laughs> Neither have I, apparently, but it's stressing me out. Oh, no, oh. it fell out again. Maybe. I, don't I know think... 
Yeah, I think you need to call 1010. That's the one you need to ask. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it'll take a few weeks to get back to you. <laughs> they just come to you when they want to. <laughs> and muck up your device. <laughs> right. OK, next task then, please, for me is, can you read through... I think we might have done this one many moons ago. Um, but I'd like you to read through the Brick Lane um, extract, OK? Um, I'll give you sort of a, what, five-ish minutes or so? Yeah, just, you just read through that so you've got that knowledge of that, OK? OK, OK. Oh God! That sounded like a kettle. I'm really hoping it was a kettle, at least. <laughs> or a plane. Okay, we'll manage to have a little uh, read through. Almost. Yeah. Okay. Apologies for the kettle. I can see that disturbed Katie. 
<laughs> it sounded like a fighter jet plane in your kitchen, sir. No, yeah. my, my, my kettle's not that powerful. <laughs> Did anybody else have thunder last night, but like only one massive bang? No. <laughs> no, I, th I, I, I think, yeah. It was horrible. I was lying in bed and it, honestly, it sounded like a plane had crashed in my back garden. It was horrible. <laughs> It happened once and just once. OK, let's begin to um, discuss and explore this and just initially get your um, initial reactions, thoughts back to it. And it kind of leaped out to you, the usual sorts of things. Okie dokie. So, uh, Abby, if I start with you, please. Um, how did you react as you were reading through that? What, what struck you about that text? How, well, I guess the lack of confidence in herself and everything um, mm -hmm. and how very often she's overcome by her humanity and she needs to just take a step back and think you know what I can make fish and vegetables and rice and it will go well mm. yeah good 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 yeah um okay um Katie what about you I said a lack of contentment, just generally with everything. She's discontented. Mm -hmm. Oops. Okay. And Gabe, what about you? I felt a sense of wasted effort. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, anywhere in particular did you get that did you pick that up that idea uh, mainly where she was saying that she was cooking and then the fact that Dr Hazard had to cancel and she was um, worrying that she was going to either have someone forget something or she might do something wrong mm. Good. Um, now, did anybody comment upon, pick up on um, cultural identity here? Yeah. 
What did you What did you pick up on there, Gabe? Your um, cultural identity. They have the different groups around London in specific areas where, like, um, what was it? The Muslim villages. Yeah. And she felt kind of. I feel like she feels kind of isolated. I don't know. Hmm. Good. Yeah. Yeah, this sort of sense of isolation. Good, 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 good. I mean, if we begin to sort of think about this. Uh, now, it, it kicks off that opening line there, doesn't it? Um, six months now since she'd been sent away to London. Does that suggest the fact that she's been sent away? She doesn't want to be there. Doesn't want to be there. Anything else? She doesn't really, well, she might not feel like she has anywhere to call home because if she was sent away, obviously mm -hmm. she's come from a place where she's not wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Good, we got that. Um, also, um, isn't it? It's I would say as well. It's lack of. It's a. It's lack of not just choice. Um, lack of individual choice here, isn't it? Um, it, 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 there's there's compulsion going on. She's been sent away to London. Okay. Uh, every morning before she opened her eyes, she thought. If I were the wishing type, I know what I would wish. Uh, and then she opened her eyes and saw Chanu's puffy face on the pillow next to her. Her lips parted, or his lips parted indignantly, even as he slept. Uh, she saw the pink dressing table with the curly sided mirror and the monstrous black wardrobe that claimed most of the room. Was it cheating to, to think I know what I would wish? Was it not the same as making the wish? If she knew what the wish would be, then somewhere in her heart she already made it. What else is going on in that paragraph there, do you think? Seems like a real clash of personalities. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, right. What, what, what's happened? Has anybody twigged? What's happened here? I think it's an arranged marriage. That's it, is, it is most definitely is. Um, and then, uh, whoops, what's going on? What could we think about here? What's going on with the, the concept of the wish? And then she opens her eyes. What, what, what's, what's been offset deliberately against each other there? She doesn't want the man next to her to be next to her. But she doesn't. And so, I mean, if she's wishing, what what does that suggest that she's she's doing? If she wishes, you know, every morning before she opens her eyes, she thought, if I were the wishing type, I know what I would wish. What does that wish symbolise? Her independence and ability to make her own choices. Oh, yeah, yeah, good. Anything else? Anything else? If you're just wishing something, what is it? It's like a prayer almost. Oh, I like that. I hadn't thought of that. That's good. Mm. Bit of Madonna in there, just like a prayer. <laughs> I'll take you there. <laughs> Do you know that song, Katie? No. <laughs> it's a modern one, Katie. Pretty modern. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we've got, yeah, so own choices, independence, like a prayer that she's sort of sending up. Um, and you can you can think about it, isn't it? Um, I wish it's, it's, it's a dream stroke, you know, fantasy. It, 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 it's something. And then she opens her eyes. And what she what she confronted to with when she opens her eyes? The complete opposite. Yeah, and the complete opposite is what? Him. Yeah, and he represents 
harsh reality, doesn't he? You know, it's the realism, isn't it? It's, and again, think about it. She's doing that every morning. Every morning before she wake, you know, just as she's of that that moment between waking and um, still sort of in, in a little bit of sleep sort of thing, she's just wishing she was somewhere else. She, she wasn't in London, wasn't in Brick, Brick Lane, you know, uh, somewhere else. And then she opens up and the first thing she sees is her husband's. And again, that description is his puffy face and, and his lips parted indignantly. What has maybe been suggested about his personality before we even get sort of deeper into the extract? It's very controlling and he has a good emotional grasp on her because, well, he's a very angry person with the indignance. Yeah, he's, yeah, even in sleep, he seems, you know, not contented. Yeah. OK. Um. And then we've got the questions that she, she's asking herself, you know, was it cheating to think? I know what I would wish. Was it not the same as making the wish? Yeah. And so we're beginning to get that sense of internal conflict, aren't we? OK. And so that that little bit there, you know, is that idea of questioning herself, um, our motivation and everything. Um, and so we're getting there. The, the internal conflict and and again you know if you're asking questions yourself it goes back to that i think it was abby that mentioned it you know that sense of identity who you are what you are um second paragraph begins with the tattooed lady um straight away and um, what's our reaction what what are we thinking tattooed lady what does that symbolize what does that suggest to you i don't like her what did you say gabe I don't like her. I don't know why. I just get this like why? weird, but why weird not? vibe. Why not? I feel like she's just really mean all the time, like really angry. She's, okay. she's painted out to be, well, she might not be, she might be the total opposite, but she's painted out to be like she doesn't have a care in the world for anything or anyone. Mm -hmm. And she's painted and she's told to be ugly and stuff, but that doesn't matter. It's just the fact that it's, um, it's. Yeah, I mean, and, and this really does boil down to, I mean, it's about how do you react to somebody with tattoos? I mean, do, I mean, again, do we make um, X, you know, what do we call it? To make assumptions about people who wear tattoos and all that sort of thing. Um, so we've got the tattooed lady. That's how she's identified, isn't it? She doesn't know her name. She weighs back at Nazneen. Uh, she scratched her arms, her, soul, her shoulders, the accessible portions of her buttocks. She yawned and lit a cigarette. <clears throat> at least two thirds of the flesh on show were covered in ink. Nazine had never been close enough, never close than this, never further to decipher the designs. Chanu said the tattoo lady was Hell's Angel, which upset Nazneen. She thought the tattoos might be flowers or birds. They were ugly and they made the tattoo lady more ugly than was necessary. But the tattoo lady clearly did not care. Every time Nazneen saw, she wore the same look of boredom and detachment. Such a state was sought by the sadhus who walked in rags through the Muslim villages, indifferent to the kindness of strangers, the unkind sons. Um, what are we thinking of the tattoo lady? What sort of character is being constructed here by the writer? Abby, what are you thinking? She's very independent. She just does what she wants. She's cold to anyone who doesn't reflect the same personality, I think. I like guess. Okay doesn't respect someone who wouldn't have their independence, I guess. Yeah, but but don't don't miss the point that she actually. Hmm? Um, the tattoo lady waves back. Does she not? I mean, that, 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 and at least, you know, she's acknowledging. She, yeah. I think she might be jealous of her. 
Why? Why, Gabe? Why do you think she might be jealous of her? Well, there are different versions of Islam, and I don't want to be the one to say about it, because I'm obviously not Muslim. However, I do know, for one thing, that you are not allowed to show your body if you are a mm. woman in some respects. But this lady has got three three thirds of her it's what, not three thirds, that's the whole thing. She's got, <laughs> what, yeah. hopefully not. She's got, um, I don't know where, it, two thirds. Two thirds, that's right, yeah. Yeah, she's got two thirds of her flesh on show and she might just be thinking either she's thinking, um, oh, I wish I could be as free as her or she's thinking, um, how dare she? Mm. I, yeah. don't, I don't know. But... Yeah, I mean, it, there is this, isn't there, again, it, and again, it's that sense that she, you know, she owns her own body, isn't it? That sort of thing, which might be quite. Again, you get the the, the idea comes across that Nazneen does not have that sort of sense of independence and sort of you know confidence sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah, and you see, it's about the, the skin, the flesh that's on the show. Um, I mean, the fact that um, she, the tattooed lady, is, in that sort of setting sense, is, is described as you know, scratching her arms or shoulders, accessible portions of her buttocks, yawns and lit, lights a cigarette. That initial description makes her seem a little bit what? Uncomfortable. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to say rough, but I don't mean it like... Uh, no, you that, know. That, that, yeah, that's spot on. I was, I was going to kind of, sort of guide you back to Gatsby and um, what's her face? Oh, the vulgar. Oh, yes, yeah, back to the vulgar thing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it is, but I mean, yeah, you're quite right, Katie. I mean, it is. That's what we, what how we we, we might see it. You know, it's vulgar, rough. That that kind of this that that depiction of it is deliberately, uh, uh, isn't it? Uh, um, another thing, it might be, uh, you know, and. In Nazneen's mind as well, it's that the other kind of adjective might be used. You know, it makes us seem common, isn't it? Because it's that idea of scratching yourself, isn't it? You know, and again, it, it goes right. You know, it starts off okay, arms, fair enough, shoulders, but then it's the buttocks sort of thing. You know, having a, you know, it, it's kind of a blokey thing to do in a way, almost, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, um, it makes you feel again, a bit. It, might, it makes you seem a bit dirty. I don't yeah. know why. Yeah, isn't it? And again, and again, it goes into that kind of stereotype, isn't it? Again, yawning, lights a cigarette. Um, and we can think about it, is it? No, is it? Is this, you know, deliberate stereotype by the, the, the writers using here to offset against Nazneen and, and her depiction in, the, in, in this tale and the way that she, you know, both are sort of portrayals, aren't they? They're both females. Yeah, and it's interesting. She's never, she well, the fact that she calls her the, the tattoo lady. What does that tell you? That they've never done, spoken, never spoken, because she doesn't know her name. And then Chanu is is is, is giving her a further uh, piece of identification, saying that she's a hell's angel, and that kind of brings in sort of obviously the context, doesn't it as well? You know, that's saying who are the hell's angels? bike riders yeah that's it you know just just like that yeah that, that's the very thing and again again seen as sort of a violent sort of subculture isn't it um we'd normally associate hell's angels with what type of politics katie anarchy hey anarchy's back in the room i like anarchy um i was gonna say you kid yeah yeah i think yeah yeah that's i think we, we, you'd normally associate them with right wing wouldn't you yeah, politics, that sort of thing, um, which again can can be a great disservice to them. Uh, that sort of white supremacy type of thing. Um, we 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 get that, but here it would suggest that obviously she, this person can't be like that because she's waving back at Nazneen, who's also from another culture, and it doesn't phase her, doesn't bother her one little jot. Um, and again, it tells you more about Chanu and the assumptions he's making, and it. It begins to make you think, who are the outsiders here within this little extract? Yeah. Um, Chanu, her husband, automatically thinks the worst. And, you know, he says, he says, oh, she's a hell's angel. And Nazneen thinks, oh, she likes to think the best. Yes, she thinks, oh, maybe they're flowers or birds. Yeah. Um, but it's this this idea um, that uh, Nazneen has, though, that... Um, she is somebody different to her, 
Um, and there is negativity here because, again, Nazneen makes her assumptions too because she sees that she wears the same look of boredom, the tattooed lady, and detachment. Is there then maybe a common bond between Nazneen and the tattooed lady? Possibly. Right? Do you want to... Is the, is, does that not echo something else, Gabe? As you jumped on me, yeah, possibly. Well, yeah, she's not she's not too different in uh, respect to her marriage with um, Chanu. Mm -hmm. Because obviously she's not happy. She's bored, and she's yeah, she's got a, a real sense of detachment because she's she doesn't love him at all. I guess. Well, we don't know that, but um, yeah, that's what I can tell. Um, so yeah, I feel like it's not really the same kind of thing because she's the the tattoo lady's probably fed up with her life. Um, where Nan Nazneen doesn't, I don't don't think she's necessarily fed up with her life and the way she's living it. I just feel like there are some aspects of it which she would change if she could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Uh, that, that, that works. Yeah, good, good, good. Yeah. Um, I'm putting in there as well. You'll see. Um, who is Nazneen describing here? Do you think is it the tattoo lady or herself? Um. Abby and Katie, can you make any connection to anything that we've had as well, which in the way that she's describing the tattoo lady might be a reflection of herself? The com the connection back to, I assume, where she used to live in these Muslim villages. There is that, but I was thinking within the text, does this not, whoops, hang on, is this not... She sees, um, you know, the, the the same look of boredom and detachment. Isn't that what Nazneen's suffering from when she wakes up every morning wishing she were somewhere else with someone else? Isn't she detached from her life? Yes. So those comments could equally apply to herself, maybe. And again, maybe, maybe, maybe she recognizes that in the tattoo lady Oops. maybe the fact that she that she recognizes this look of boredom and detachment maybe is it not a case that it's kindred spirits here Nobody agree with me? No? Nobody disagree with me? I agree. Um, I agree. Ah, thanks. Oh, you, don't, you don't always have to agree with me, you know. You can take you can take up arms against me. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it, again, it's just some of these things, that little clues as you begin to look at it. Um, because she's obviously intrigued by her, isn't she? And, and, and what the tattoos might be. But she's never got close enough. Never kind of dared to get close enough to do anything to, to strike up a conversation. Okay, well, blimey, that went quick. It's coming round to 22, and that'll be the end of the lesson. Ah, that was that was most enjoyable. Good way to start the week. Yeah, so the essay has to be in by Friday, and when does the poem have to be in by Friday? Right. I, I, I will put that into one note today. I'll just, when I come off the lesson, I'll, I'll put all the details in. Um, if we make that, right, the essay's this week, and then say the poem maybe by middle of next week sort of thing. That oh, OK, yeah. Yeah, I, I want to give you a bit of time, because obviously you've got, to, you've got to go and find your painting first or your, your photograph or your bit of sculpture. You've got to find your muse first before you write it. And then I'm okay. sure Katie's going to go through many a draft with her poetry. She she won't be, you know, just slamming the words down on paper. That, but everyone yeah. will be carefully chosen. Honestly, it'll be like thinking of a famous poet. Keats. Does Keats, Keats writes poetry? It'd be like Keats poets. It, he does indeed. Well, he did indeed, uh, you know, deceased sort of thing. But yeah, no, very good. Yeah, so, so I'll put all that in one note and share it with you. So, you know, there's a timeline we're looking at. Okay. 
OK, thank you. Right. Thank Bye. you. And I'll see you next lesson. OK. Yeah. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye.